Hi, and welcome everybody, and especially welcome to you, Marina. We're so happy that you wanted to join us here in the Danish uh, community. And just before we begin, I just wanted to say a few words about uh, the organization uh, of the Danish uh, community, the Danish Three Principles Community, 3PDK. Because this webinar is hosted by 3PDK, and it's a non-profit organization based in Denmark. And our purpose is to spread the understanding of the three principles. Uh, this understanding is a spiritual understanding and it's spreading all over the world. The understanding of the three principles has helped people overcome stress, anxiety, addiction, depression, and has helped people find back to clarity, peace, and mental health again and again. And you can learn more about the Danish three principles community on our website, 3pdk.org, and in the Facebook group that's called 3PDK, the three principles Denmark. So welcome again to you, Marina. Well, thank you. First of all, thank you for inviting me. Um, this might sound corny, but it's still true. So I am going to say it. I feel a very special connection with you people. <laughs> And I cannot explain it. It's like It's like one of those things, you know, like when you start dreaming about a place or when you just know you have to go someplace I just feel a really deep connection with with you guys and and I am grateful for that so thank you for inviting me it's it's always a treat to be here and um so Sana kept asking me at some point what what do you want to talk about what do you want to talk about and I didn't have a clue right so at some point something will show up And I was talking to a friend of mine and I was asking him questions and stuff. And, and I asked him, what, what do you want? And he said, well, I just want to be able to live in a more conscious state so that I can hear and comply with what the universe asks of me. And I stopped and I asked him, what does the universe ask of you? And then he got really quiet and he said, I don't have a clue. And then half an hour later, he answered again and he said, I don't think the universe asks for anything from us. Does it? Ha <laughs> ha. So that moment was definitory and I said well I don't know I will stay with the question I will live with the question for a while so that day when Sane wrote me and asked me what do you want to talk about I said well this I don't I don't know whether there's there will be something to say or not but let's talk about this what is the universe asking of us and why now I don't know if you guys have the habit of living with questions but i do and when you live with a question it's as if your eyes focused out of all of reality on the things that can answer the question that you are living with and the trick is to not let the question be closed, but let it remain open, no matter how many times it, it gets answered. Because then you just keep seeing deeper and deeper and deeper, right? And this brings us inevitably to the first thing that the universe asks of us. Ta-da! Are you ready? Okay, so here's the deal. The nature of life is conversational. Does that make sense or not at all? Yes, okay. The nature of life is conversational. What does that mean? Please open your microphones. Let me know what you see when I say the nature of life is conversational and you say, yes, it is. Yes, it is. And relational. 
Yes, tell me a little bit more, Nomi. Come on. It's like everything is relation. Not not only on the outside, but in, in the inside, the relationship with within all the movement that is going on all the time. It's like the way so to be aware. Yes. So what would be the difference between relational and conversational? Sorry, ask again. What would be the difference between relational and conversational? Well, my first instinct is to say that it is the same. The only difference is the vibration of it. The conversation is more like uh, between uh, out in the open, outspoken, where the relation is sensed um, back and forth. Okay, interesting. I'll play with that. Thank you. I don't know. I don't. I don't have the answer. That was just my <laughs> first. Don't close the answer. Don't close the answer. Let it open. Yes. Who else? What does it mean that the nature of life is conversational? Ea or Ia? I don't know how to pronounce that. I'm sorry. <laughs> yeah, me too. Sorry. Yeah. yeah. Well, I, I, what I'm hearing is that it, it goes both ways, right? A conversation is something that you're sharing. Both both parties are participating. So there's participation from both ends. Okay. Really cool. So <laughs> we are asked to actively participate. Yes. Mm -hmm. Thank you. What else? Okay, again, Nomi, I guess she has seen something. Come on. I, I can always speak, but I can always right. also be silent. It's just that uh, I just uh, thought that conversation, con, that's being with, isn't it? The understanding of the word con, conversation. So Thank being you. together with, being within. Mm -hmm. I don't know, that's just popping up. So being in this. Do you know the root of versational? No. No? Okay. Does anyone know the root of verse? Okay. I'll tell you. <laughs> the root of verse means to pour. To pour. Now, the interesting thing about pouring is that it demands an emptying of. And that is the difference between relational and conversational. Relational does not demand an emptying of, and conversational does. When you converse, you it's as if you had two glasses and you verse everything, and then it gets enriched by and then you verse it back, but it requires an emptying off. Now that emptying is incredibly relevant and important in our relationship to everything. Yes, now there are relationships that are not require emptying. They are not particularly enriching relationships <laughs> they are not particularly um transformational relationships but they are relationships yes so we begin to unravel the conversational nature of life so you see when we ask a question we are emptying ourselves yes when we live with a question, we are committing ourselves to living in an empty state and allowing life to verse itself onto that void to inform us. Does that make sense? Yes? Thank you for bringing the roots, Nomi. Very good, you. Maha or Maja, you see this? 
this saying things. Yes. So the, my first thought was, do you hear me? You you sound as if you as if you had been recorded underwater while you play with an octopus and are it's, being I know, it's, very it's slow. It's a trick that my microphone plays on me. Do you hear me now? Yeah. Now, perfect. Yes. yes sir. Welcome to welcome to life. I'm now over water. We didn't understand. I surfaced. Yes. Welcome to the surface. Great. So at first, when you asked the question, how is how is it that life is nature? Life is conversational, and I couldn't relate to it first. But then I just let it like open, like you said, open up. And uh, what comes to me now is that it's about creation. Like the creative power says, "Be" to something, and then it becomes, and it pours itself into that being. That's that is my mm, the inside that I had, and right, and then when it ceases being, then it pours back into the source, so to speak. Yes. Could that relate to what you mean? Yes. <laughs> okay. Um, B and then it becomes. But when when we have become, we are still in that conversational nature. We are still, We're still being, you know, held by that, you know. Mm. Yes. And so it's kind of paradoxical, the fact that we cannot not be, but we need to empty. We cannot not create, but we are asked to empty so that we can receive. Yeah. Which takes us to the fact that we can, in fact, create empty. We can create voids within ourselves and outside ourselves when we ask someone a question. So a lot of what we do in coaching is we ask questions. We open up a void inside the person when we ask them interesting questions, questions that they don't know the answers to, right? Like if you ask him, what's your name? What's your favorite color? What school did you go to? That doesn't open up a void. But when you ask them questions that they don't know the answer to, a void opens up. And that void is an invitation for life to fill it up. You see? And we inevitably receive, because as they say, nature abhors a vacuum. It needs to be filled up. So if you make a void, it will be filled up. So if you ask a question, it will be answered. If you live with a question and now you have eyes for how that questions could be answered, you will be given the answers. And as long as you keep the question alive, you will keep seeing deeper and deeper and deeper into whatever it is that you are asking. As soon as you close the question, game over. The problem is that as soon as you close the question, you are left with a concept. That's all you're left with. And a concept is not alive anymore. Life is not being breathed into it. Life is not being poured into it. It is static and dead. And so now you begin to relate to the concept instead of the question and the possibility. And you have stopped emptying. You have stopped pouring. You have stopped conversing. There is a difference between the question, 
what is the universe asking of us? And what is the universe demanding? What is inescapable for human beings? Right? So is consciousness inescapable? Mr. Jacob is saying yes. Is consciousness inescapable? Can we escape consciousness? No. So that is not something that we are being asked for. Is thought is capable? No. Is experience is capable? No. So we can leave those behind. That is not what the universe is asking of us. That is a given. The universe is so wise that it has said, we cannot exist without consciousness and thought and experience. So that is not negotiable. It is not on the table. There are many other things that are negotiable. Being open is negotiable. Following guidance is negotiable. What else? Is suffering negotiable? Yes. Is enjoyment negotiable? Is creativity negotiable? No, it is not. I am sorry, Lars. It is non-negotiable because you are a creative being. Even if, we, even if you choose not to engage, you are creating through that. It is impossible to not create. Whatever you are doing or not doing is creation. So what, what do we have so far? How, how what? What is the question? How is not doing creation? I'll give you a, a recent example. I was, I am working with a, with a client and he wants to create all sorts of things in his business, right? And so we have been working on the creation of his business and the creation of his clients and the creation of his brand and the creation of everything else. And then one day I ask him, so uh, let's, let's drop work for a second. What kind of relationship are you creating with your wife? And he goes blank and he says, what do you mean? I am not creating a relationship with my wife. I just have one. So I said, okay, so how does that look? Well, it's just there, you know, there's the relationship. So I asked him, well, what kind of relationship are you, create are you creating by not creating deliberately a certain type of relationship? And he went blank. He said, can I create a relationship? Like, well, you are creating one. So he messaged me later that night and he told me, I was driving home from work and I saw a lady selling daffodils. I would have never in my life thought about buying flowers for my wife if we had not had this conversation today. But I did, I am now heading home with daffodils. He got home, gave the daffodils to his wife and told her, I realized today that I have not been creating 
the relationship I want with you. I have been creating a very shitty one. And the wife broke in tears and said, I know. I did not know I could create relationship. I know. And after that came a conversation in which she confessed that she was planning to separate and then he, you see? Did I answer your question, Lars? Yes? Okay. So I can create a very strong, healthy body by exercising. But if I don't do that, I am creating an unhealthy body, an unhealthy lifestyle. Yes? So we cannot escape creation. That is a given. So again, what do we have so far? Suffering, joy, bliss, following guidance. The direction that we want to create in. Yes? Active participation. Yes? All right. Now, what is the difference between asking for and allowing? There are things that the universe is allowing and then there are things that it is asking for. And it's an important distinction, right? So what is the universe allowing? For us, in us, through us. Here we go, no me. Come on. <laughs> yeah. Well, it's it's allowing us to express. It is allowing us to express. Yes. In a million different way, in a million different ways, in which we can decide some of it ourselves. <laughs> yes. Absolutely. And it's like, I, I don't know what it's, if it's, I just get, have this feeling that some of it we cannot escape because it's very much, it's light. You know, if we have a, a light bulb, we have different tones, different lights in us or different sounds that we cannot escape because we just vibrate in different ways. Yes. So I can, I can only express some of all these wonderful vibrations that is present in in everything and you vibrate whatever you do i can never vibrate you but you can also never vibrate me <laughs> cool so so some of it is is uh, some of it i can choose i can choose how to react to things but i cannot choose my vibration okay. i like that that is a vast conversation pregnant conversation <laughs> yes we will have it one day Nomi I promise because it points to destiny and stuff as it is understood by the Mahabharata and the Indians yes very interesting very interesting but let's go back to our topic the difference between allowing and asking for Can I say something? Please. Well, I was just thinking about that. What's the difference between allowing and asking? And to me, it feels more active to be asking something than to be allowing it. Not yes. It feels more passive. It's I'm just kind of waiting for it to come. Yes. Yeah. There is a deliberateness in asking. Yeah, exactly. I'm I'm choosing it myself. Yes. Yeah. Great. Wonderful. Okay, we're getting closer, people. This is the good news. 
So here is the question. How does the universe ask? Sweet. Okay. Nomi, Katrin, and Lars says, I'd like to hear more about the wit destiny and so on. We'll, we'll make it happen. Yes. <laughs> okay. Nomi and Katrin, come on. Okay. Just a uh, quick, it just arises inside like an urge to do something. Okay. Good. Beautiful. Can be one of those. Yes. Katrina. Yeah, I was sort of thinking through our wisdom uh, and it asks us to be, to be present uh, instead of what it allows us, where we can choose. That was just what I was thinking. Yes, it has to do. It has to do with it. Yes. Thank you. How else? No me. Letting life trying to or doing it well it or sometimes it it's done by pain if yes if, absolutely. if i feel not comfortable it could be a sign that the universe is asking me to do something else there you go so you see pain and pleasure the two opposites Everything we are talking about has to do with guidance. When we ask, we are giving guidance. Are we not? When I ask my children, can you please pick your plates up and take them to the kitchen? I am giving them guidance. Can you please hug me? Am I giving guidance or not? Yes. Now imagine that you are God. I know that you know you are, but imagine. Anyway. <laughs> and you have created this amazing beings and you have all of these treasures and amazing experiences and growth and that you have for them. But because you love them, you have to create them free to choose that or anything else. And also because you love them, you want to bring the gift of guidance. How would you do it? If not by desire and pain. Can you think of any other way? <laughs> Makes it simple, right? Love. Yes, Catherine, love, which is deeper than that desire. But that love is expressed in us as a, I really want to go to Mongolia. I am really inspired by Tango and not opera. You see? There is a sense of pleasure. There is a sense of desire. There is a sense of excitement and aliveness and, and, and being drawn to. And then there's pain and suffering. So it allows us to suffer if we want to. It allows us to disalign with, I am going to throw the word here, are you ready? Purpose. Purpose. 
If there is guidance, does that mean there is purpose? Can there be guidance without purpose? No, so there must be a purpose, right? What's the purpose of the universe? Ha ha! Are we asking some deep questions here today? It must have something to do with how we are being guided, right? What is wisdom up to? To create, yes, Catherine, but to create anything? Is guidance up to creating suffering as well? Is guidance up to his purpose, up to creating uh, destruction and uh, suffering and imposition on others if it feels so bad? You see, yes, there is creation. There is always creation, but there is a guidance behind it, behind what we create. Because when you create, Catherine, Catherine, Katrine, how do I pronounce her name? Katrine. I say, I say Katrina, but uh, okay, yeah. Katrina. <laughs> okay, Katrina. Here we go. You can create jealousy for yourself. But it brings suffering. And that suffering is a guidance away from you creating jealousy for yourself. I was I was just thinking that even though you feel low or depressed or whatever, life still wants to create, right? Yes. So so it is creating jealousy and all those negative feelings. You're still pointing towards creation, right? Creation is happening. You can't stop it. You can't subtract yourself from it. It is happening through you and around you, and in you. All three, unstoppable. And yet there is guidance. And if there is guidance, there is purpose. And if there is purpose, we can be either aligned with that purpose or not. Hence the guidance, right? Mm, I see that. So what is the universe asking of us? To go with the flow. <laughs> cool. No, yes, and I'm gonna tell you why, Katrina. Because the flow is happening and you can have either resistance to it or not. If you picture it like a river, you know, and you're a branch flowing in it, you can be across the river, you know, perpendicular to the river and creating a lot of resistance or not. So yes, going with the flow. And Nomi says fulfillment, to feel whole as a part of it all, to be loved to expand and love, expansion. What if that were true? To allow the guidance. Yes, Christelle, thank you. Nina, please open your microphone. Well, as I think I see it right now, all my suffering experience has been guided me towards seeing love, to receive love. I think that's what I feel my guidance has been drawn to or that I've been longing to see love. And that's also truth. So truth is, truth and love becomes nearly the same thing in that longing for me, I think. Yes. So what you're saying here, here's what I, how I would word it. 
when I feel constrained, when I feel suffering and lostness and resistance of, in any of its variations, the uncomfortableness of it is letting me know that there is a more loving way to experience it, a more loving way to see things, a less judgmental way, a less preferential way to see it that must then be more aligned with truth yes exactly you see mm -hmm. so it is guiding me away from my limited perspective and into a wider possibility of love mm -hmm. whatever that may mean in that particular situation And sometimes what love can mean in a particular situation is quite shocking. Mm. When you respond to the guidance. Mm Thank you, Nina. So love, expansion, a broader vision. The purpose is that the universe is asking us to follow that guidance from moment to moment. Well, that's what it is asking us. Yes, without a doubt. It is allowing the suffering, but the suffering is a guidance back to the non-suffering. So yes, it is asking us to follow that guidance. The purpose is a deeper question. The universe asks us to get lost and find unity again, over and over. Well, <clears throat> It does not ask us to get lost. We get lost. We are allowed to get lost. <laughs> it asks us to follow guidance back to being found, <laughs> finding ourselves. If you live with the rules of nature, you will live an easier life. Exactly. So what does easier mean, Katrina? More aligned, more peaceful. More peaceful, yeah. That's what I'm saying. Yes. And again. Yeah, that's what, what the principles give us, right? <laughs> well, that's what understanding how we yeah. work. Is, mm. Right? But again, <clears throat> sometimes peace. <laughs> okay, so I'm going to try to word it this way. When you radically commit to peace, which it would be the same as to say when you radically commit to guidance and you say, I am not going to make my peace dependent on anything, nothing, ever. I will keep my peace. And by, by making that radical commitment, you are committing to staying aligned and being shown which way of looking at things, which way of believing, which way of thinking about it allows you to keep the peace. And sometimes that can be incredibly shocking, the way in which you can keep your peace. I'm gonna give you a very, very stupid blunt example, okay? So if I am a very racist person and suddenly my son decides to start raising a person from another, dating another per, other person from another race and I am committed to my peace and I keep my peace, I will be forced to look at the person my son loves in a different way, which can be shocking to the way I have been seeing them until now.
what is this? Well, yeah, if you want to keep your peace, this is it. As shocking as it may sound. If you want to keep your peace, this is the way you need to look at it. But you see how you are, by committing radically to your peace, you are opening up the question, how can I look at this so that I do not lose the peace? You are emptying yourself of everything you have held true until now. And you are asking actively, deliberately for another way. And if you ask, you shall receive. Asking is emptying. Asking is letting go. So, what is the universe asking of us? To follow the guidance, yes. To commit to peace, yes. To commit to clarity, yes. Why? Because then we would be aligned with the purpose, with the greater purpose. which is love. We are guided with a quiet desire for something that we can follow and something bigger opens up simple hey someone wrote the purpose is to feel good yeah because when we feel good we are aligned with the bigger purpose the purpose of guidance is to get us to a good place because from a good place then we can participate differently in the act of creation that we have been invited to take part on. Because we cannot escape creation and there is the possibility of creating from a space of alignment or not. So the big ask, the big purpose is that we create from a place of alignment. That we live from a place of alignment because we are creators. We are active participants. We cannot not be. So I have not written back to my friend yet but when I do I will tell him listen I am finding out that the universe is actually asking I mean because he told me very beautiful things the universe is not asking for anything the universe is just giving us eternally with no interest in it I was like oh no there is an interest because there's guidance and if there's guidance there's a purpose and so I'm going to have to write back to him and I'm going to have to tell him I am seeing that the universe is actually asking something of us. What it is asking of us is to be happy, to be at peace, to be aligned, so that we can create in alignment with it. But only if we want to. It is not being imposed on us. <clears throat> We do suffer the consequences if we don't. Ha! But it is not being opposed, imposed on us. We are allowed 
because we are allowed, we are loved, we are respected. You can bring your suffering, you can bring your lostness and you can create from that space of suffering and lostness. It will not be aligned, but it is allowed. Creating from a place of alignment implies an amazing, wonderful, enjoyable, blissful life. But you're allowed to choose different because you are loved. And that love is alignment. You see? That allowance is alignment. Otherwise, it wouldn't be here. The allowance is alignment. You want that? Give it to yourself. Oh, you want that? Give it to yourself. Whatever you choose. Now, Let's go to the bigger purpose because creation in alignment. Da, 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 da. So it kind of makes you wonder, so where are we being guided? Like what's, what is this about? What's the point of the, where are we being led? Yes, in our small, tiny little experiences, happiness and bliss and peace and creation from there, but as a species, as a universe, universe, that little word again, what is wisdom up to? What is guidance up to? Could it be that we are truly, really being guided to the best possible possibility? As cacophonous as it sounds. And we are just very slowly and clumsily finding our way there. There is a beautiful quote by a Zen master that says, <clears throat> listen to this. Given authenticity, there will be enlightenment. What does that mean? If we really, truly, fully commit to being true to ourselves and follow the guidance, because that's what it means, authenticity. Follow the guidance. This doesn't feel right. I need to set a limit. This doesn't feel good. I need to walk away. This doesn't feel good. I need to find a new perspective. Given authenticity, there will be enlightenment. If we commit to guidance, there will be enlightenment. It's a little mind blowing, no? <laughs> and then the words of Sid kind of Sid Banks kind of resonate a little bit. Yes, the problem is that you are using your good will in your illusions of going against the will of God, but that's the only will there is. Yes, because there is allowance, but there is also guidance. So when you align your free will with the will of God, with the will of mind, Yes, a happier experience of life for us, but a greater participation in the path towards universal enlightenment, the best possible possibility, universally. 
the Baha'is believe that a coming together of humanity in love, compassion, and understanding is not only desirable, it is inevitable. Why? Because guidance. If there is guidance, at some point, it becomes inevitable. And now the words of another sage come to mind. Mr. Anthony de Melo saying, enlightenment is absolute collaboration with the inevitable. We started this conversation by asking what is inevitable? Absolute collaboration with the inevitable. Given authenticity, there must be enlightenment. What is the universe asking of you? To live in peace, to be happy, to enjoy yourself, and act and create from there. To commit to that, even when you cannot find the way, and then empty yourself and ask for a way. Why? Because that's the purpose. That's your purpose, and that's the purpose. And we have all been summoned to actively, deliberately participate in it. We are not accidents. For you to be alive, for you to be here tonight listening to me, the whole story of the universe needed to happen. All of it. All of it. How can you call yourself an accident? Like Alan Watts says, you do not, you did not come into this world, you came out of it. You are not a stranger. You are an active participant in this game called life. And the way we play it is. There is guidance, we either listen to it or we don't. Depending on whether we listen to it or we don't, we have a good experience or not. In the end, everybody wins. How do you want to play? Usually when we get lost, it's because we are so full of ourselves and we have forgotten to empty. There is confusion, yes, but there's also guidance. So when there's confusion, empty. There's suffering, empty. Ask for another way. because the universe is asking you to find another way through pain.
that's all I have so far. I will keep leaving with the questions and let you know if anything else comes up. <laughs> oh, Troels, I don't know how to pronounce the name. I'm so sorry. If we are not accidents, there must be a deeper purpose. What is it we are supposed to see when we are enlightened? Ah, you want me to ruin the surprise for you? Come on. We don't know. That's the beauty of it. If you were given the chance, if you were given the opportunity to know everything that is going to happen in your life from now on, would you take it? No. We love being surprised. Every day is like Christmas morning. You don't want to know what's in the box before you open it. It ruins the fun. What will we see? I don't know. But in the meantime, I'm going to have a blast. I mean, I can guess. But I know that my tiny, 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 tiny little human mind cannot even fathom it. It is beyond whatever I can conjure up. I really like Christmas mornings. I'm going to have a blast while it gets here. Yes, Nina. I liked when you described the word conversation with pouring. Yeah. And, and it has to be empty before you can pour something into. And then you, I think you said, or I heard, that to empty yourself, you could ask. To yes. ask questions is to kind of get empty but in my mind to ask and try to get empty is a kind of a an actively work and work, and work yes kind of small small tiny work to ask to find the right question or how do I empty myself and what uh, comes closer to my heart in that way of seeing getting empty so something can be poured into is that I get silence. Same thing. Do you mean the same? Do yes. you? Okay. Yes. Then I understand. <laughs> yes. Yeah. It's the same. Okay. There is silence. I stop repeating what I think I know and then there is silence and then something new can come up. Yeah, because when I, uh, sometimes uh, my asking is a kind of a prayer. I ask for something, I pray for something. Uh -huh. no, and, no, then, no. And, then, and then I get, then I'm not wide open, but if I get silent, I feel, wow, something completely new can come. But that's yes. probably a different way of use the language also. Of yeah. course, when you are asking for something in particular, you are not asking. I see. I see. Yes. You so mean I, asking? I don't know. Act, it's more an open attitude, you yes. mean? Yeah, I see. Asking is, I don't know, show me. Yeah. The universe asking of us, I don't know, show mm. me. Yeah, I like that. What does real love look like? I don't have a clue. Show me. What does an amazing life look like? I don't know. Show me. Yes. And show me is, a, is an opening. Uh... Yes. Mm. I am not asking for a great partner three houses on the beach, two in the mountains, five cars. And... No, I am, show me, I don't know.
I am opening myself up. I am emptying myself of what I have known until now. So that something new can come in. Yes, that made it, me it more clear for me. Thank you. Good. Good, I am glad. Thank you so much, Marina. Our time is uh, up already. Really? Oh my God, that was fast. <laughs> I'm, I'm just so grateful that you came up with this uh, topic because I think it's the best topic that we've ever had. <laughs> but I didn't know. Like when, when I told you, I really didn't know. I had just thought of a question because my friend, I was like, well, I, I, I don't know. Let's see. Yeah. Yeah. It was so beautiful. Thank you so much for doing this for us. Thank you. Yeah. Keep telling you, I have a blast with you guys. Yeah, and it goes goes the other way as well. Yeah. Thank you. thank you so much. And thank you all for coming. It's been such a pleasure being here with you all. Yes. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. All right. Have a See good you all. Enjoy. Thank you. Bye. Bye. Bye.